Grace and peace, everybody. Good to see you all. This is Dear World Christian again. So today we're going to do something kind of different. We're going to do something a little bit different. I am going to review. Um, I'm going to review Peggy McIntosh's 47 white privilege unpacking the knapsack, Jimmy Jams, whatever like that. Now, in a previous video, I asked you all to comment down below if you wanted me to do this. So I'm doing this because you all asked for it. Y'all, come on. This was so bad. Oh, my gosh. I've said it before that I believe critical race theory is a cult. It's a different religious system. And I've also said that the strength of critical race theory is that you don't know your Bible. Critical race theory in the, in the Christian space, in the church, is primarily because people don't know their Bibles. These rules, these white privilege knapsack things are so stupid. I'm so mad. And I know people are going to get into feelings because I said they're stupid. And I'm going to say they're stupid. I'm going to probably say that a lot of times during this. So, you know, count how many times I say this is stupid in the chat and or down in the comments, let me know. But um, if you voted for me to do this, you should buy me a coffee because I'm telling you right now. <laughs> This was cruel and unusual punishment. Let us begin. This is Peggy McIntosh's infamous essay, White Privilege, Unpacking the Invisible Knapsack. I was taught to see racism only in individual acts of meanness, not in an invisible systems conferring dominance on my group. All right, so let's get to the, the let's cut through it, and then we're going to read through all these, uh, oh my gosh. I decided to try to work on myself, at least by identifying some of the daily effects of white privilege on my life. I have chosen those conditions that I think, in my case, attach somewhat more to skin color privilege than, class, than to class, religion, ethnic status, or geographic location. Though, of course, all of these, all of these other factors are intrinsically intertwined. I want you to think about that because that's going to be that's going to play a big role. OK, race, I'm sorry, religion, ethnicity, geographic location, socioeconomic status, all those things are going to play a big role in it. Peggy boils them all down to white versus black, highly melanated, less melanated. That's it. But just think about some of these things and could there be other factors in play? Now, I'm not saying that there's not some kind of um, ethnic bias. I'm not saying that there's not some kind of ethno partiality not saying that but is that is that is it possible does peggy make room for the possibility that there's another reason why this kind of stuff happens cuz i'm going to talk about a lot of these other things and they're going to be pretty glaring like no that's probably not what you think peg but let us continue as far as i can tell my african american coworkers friends and acquaintances with whom i come to daily or frequent contact in this particular time, place and time of work cannot count on most of these conditions. Okay, so she's, this is her anecdotal understanding of black people and people of color. Let us begin. I can, if I wish, arrange to be in the company of people of my race most of the time. Are you trying to tell me, Pegs, Peg, Peg, are you trying to tell me that you're the only one only white people can get together with other white people? Are you trying to tell me that black people can't just say, hey, I just want to hang out with black people or that I have a black contingency or Hispanic contingency of friends, Asian contingency of friends, but I, I can't just do that. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, this is brain damage. Let us continue. I can avoid spending time with people whom I was trained to mistrust and who I have learned to mistrust my kind, I'm sorry, mistrust my kind or me. I don't even know what that even means. You just don't have to hang out with people. I, I don't understand how that's a privilege. I, are you honestly, do you honestly want me to believe that an Asian person cannot say, can say to him or herself, you know what? I don't want to hang out with Jason. I'm going to go hang out with somebody else. Are you honestly trying to tell me that? Brain dead. If I should, number three, if I should need to move, I can 
be pretty sure of renting or purchasing housing in an area which I can afford and in which I would want to live. Okay. Again, or do you really want me to believe, Pegs, that no, no black people can move wherever they want to move. No Asian, Hispanic, whatever can move where they want to move. Are you really want, do you really want me to believe that? Is that what you want me to believe? I, I'm not going to believe it because it's dumb. It's stupid. <laughs> it's just dumb. I'm sorry, but it's going to actually get dumber. Number four, I can do pretty, I can be pretty sure that my neighbors in such a location will be neutral or pleasant to me. I think if I wanted to, I, I would love to bring my neighbors on my show because they're the nicest people I know. I mean, just plain old people. But you know what, though? I don't fixate when I don't talk to my neighbors. If I ride by them and I see them in a wave or they're power walking down the street and they say hi, that's it. I don't feel like, oh, I haven't seen them in a couple of days. They're at a clan meeting or something ridiculous. I just, I don't fixate on that. But th that's on Peg's. That's Peg's problem. That's not my neighbor's problem. That's, that's them. I can go shopping alone most of the time pretty well assured that I will not be followed or harassed. I, I, I've i never been followed or harassed. And you know what? I don't know. I don't know if I've been followed. I don't, I don't fixate on that though. And I live in a neighborhood that's predominantly white. And I go to the Publix, the Kroger, the, the, I never think about being followed in the grocery store. I, I, I'm sorry. And I'm going to go on a limb. Most black people don't. If they live in an area, but again, the area may very well play a huge role in that. I'm just saying. Number six. I can turn on television or open the front page of the new, of the paper and see people of my race widely represented. And I think this is interesting because you heard Matt Chandler say this in his um his the, the notorious rant that he did about black people. Um, I'm sorry about facts. Uh, actually, I don't really care. I I recognize that. I don't need representation. I, I think that's part of the problem. And I'm, I am at the end, I'm going to boil down what I think Peg's problem is. I'm going to solve Peg's problem. All 47 problems and race ain't one. I'm going to solve them when we get to the bottom. But I don't need representation. I'm not sitting there fixating about, man, they, they don't have a black person running for senator. Man, they didn't have a, a black cop in this video. Man, I, I, I don't fixate on that. I don't. Because I don't strive for representation. I strive to represent where I go. And ultimately, I strive to represent and make much of Christ when I go there. But I don't fixate on that. Why do you? Let us continue. Number seven. When I am told about our national heritage or about citizen civilization, I am shown that people of my color made it what it is. Okay? People of my color made it, made it what it is too. Uh, black people played a role in this civilization. Okay, I, I don't know what that. I don't know what the problem is. I can be sure that my children will be given circular or rather curricular materials that testify to the existence of their race. So, uh, uh, let's just play a game. She literally said that they're going to have curricular materials that testify of the existence of the race. So what she said, if I understood this correctly, black people didn't exist and they don't have materials that show that black people exist in educational materials. Peg has some problems. I'm going to solve her problems at the end. If I want to, I, number nine, if I want to, I can be pretty sure of finding a publisher for this piece of white privilege on white, white privilege. I don't know what that means. So you're saying no, no black person can get published? Like, what does that mean? I can be pretty sure, number 10, I can be pretty sure of having my voice heard in a group in which I am the only member of my race. No, I can, uh, I am the only, you know what? I am the only black deacon at my church currently. And they hear my voice all the time. And there's the, the table and we have a black elder. So when we have a, 
when we have a joint session and diaconate meeting, there's two of us. But no, 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 he rolled off. I'm sorry, take that back. No, I'm the only black deacon and elder at my church. They hear me all the time. They hear me in my text messages. They hear me in my emails. They hear me in face to face when we're having a discussion about random things like fixing restrooms and getting the roofs repaired. Peggy, I'm sorry, baby. You got some problems and race is not one of them. Number 11, I can be casual about whether or not to listen to another person's voice in a group in which he or she is the only member of his or her race. I don't know what that even means. I, I don't know. I can be casual about whether or not to listen to another person's voice in a group. Okay. I, I can, to me, that sounds like you're just being reasonable with people. Maybe she's saying that she's not being respectful, but again, that's, that's Peg's problem. Are you saying that every white person ignores other people? I don't get that. Number 12, I can go into a music shop and count on finding the music of my race represented into a supermarket and find staple foods which fit with my cultural traditions into a hairdresser shop and find someone who can cut my hair. I, I'm embarrassed that this is being touted as a, a sane Kojic argument. Are you honestly trying to tell me that now this is some time ago, they don't have record shops anymore. Are you trying to tell me that you couldn't find music that represents black people? Are you honestly trying to tell me that? In 88, 89, when this was written. Are you trying to say that? Pegs, if you're still around, you need to edit this and, and take that out. Are you trying to tell me that the supermarket, like here in America, what foods at the supermarket are gonna be staples for my culture? I would love for you to say that, Pegs, because you know you're gonna step into it. Now, again, if somebody from a different culture came here, maybe you're not going to find their particular cultural foods at the most predominant grocery store. But there's a lot of farmers markets and specialty markets that probably more than likely cover that. I don't understand it. And you trying to tell me, <laughs> getting your hair cut, really? Y'all, y'all prop this woman up. Y'all made this woman famous. Yeah, she's a, she's, this is a mess. This is a whole mess. I mean, really. Let us continue. Number 13. Whether I use checks, credit card, or cash, I can count on my skin color not, not to work against the appearance of financial reliability. So can I. You know why? Because I don't have that problem. I don't know what she's talking about. This might be my, again, somebody is in the comment section wanting to say, well, Jason, your your experience is different than my experience. Not a problem. Not a problem at all. And I, I admit and I'll submit that some people may have that experience. The problem is this. Not every white person has experience that Peggy's talking about. Not every white person can go in there looking however they want to look, looking disheveled like a cat, drug them from under an 18-wheeler and get um, and, and be considered for um, being financially reliable. No. They got to look some kind of way too. So why in the world would she say this? Number 14, I can arrange to protect my children most of the time from people who might not like them. That's a privilege, really? That's white privilege to say that you can protect your children? I'm telling you, you come to Whitaker Park with ill intent for my children, you will be leaving Whitaker Park in a bag. Is that some kind of, pri what privilege is that? That you can protect your children, that you can protect your household. Your husband needs to be doing that. Why, Pegs, is that a privilege only white people have? Because again, that's what she said. 15, I can, <laughs> I do not have to educate my children to be aware of the systemic racism for their own daily physical protection. I have never done that. And I've talked about this before. I don't have, I don't do that. I don't fixate on that. I don't. And, and I just want to know. Why do you? Number 16, I can be pretty sure that my children's teachers and employers will tolerate them if they fit school and workplace norms. My chef, or rather my chief worries about them do not concern others' attitudes toward their race. I don't even know what that means. Uh, I, I don't know what that means, but I've never worried 
I, I pray with my children and I ask them to, I ask God to give them wisdom and insight on how they interact with other people all the time. Not only because they, not only for their teachers and future employers, but just that they will represent Christ wherever they go. I have no idea what Peggy's talking about. That was really, I'm sorry, that was dumb. 17, I can talk with my mouth full and not have people put this down to my color. Y'all, she really wrote that. That's literally right there. You see that right there? That is a whole grown human wrote that. I can talk with my mouth full and not have people put this down to my race or to my color. I, I didn't know to talk with your mouth full was an ethnic thing. I really did not know that. I thought it was more of a like a cultural thing. Like you ain't been cultured. Your mama ain't teach you to not talk with your mouth open. But that's a that's a black thing. That's a white thing. 18. I can swear or dress in secondhand clothes or not answer letters without having people attribute these choices to bad morals, the poverty or illiteracy of my race. She said she can cuss, she can wear hand-me-down clothes and not answer letters, and that's okay. That's a white privilege. Y'all, this is what this is what is getting pushed as a high thought. And please, if you disagree with me, I am perfectly fine with it. Please help me understand how this is germane to white people. That only white people wear hand-me-down clothes, secondhand clothes. Please tell me that. How, how is that? And then, then, to, then to have the nerve to say bad morals, the poverty or illiteracy of my race. So you're saying that because somebody shops at the thrift store, which is just a glorified Salvation Army, which is just another way of saying hand-me-downs, because they shop there, they are poor. Really? Because it's a sport to my high schoolers and her friends, they go thrifting all the time. They go to the thrift store to shop on purpose. Didn't they, wasn't there a song, wasn't there a song about a guy shopping at, at, at the thrift store or something earlier? Put it down in the chat. There was a, down in the comment section. There was a, it was a rap song a couple years back about shopping at the thrift store. Like that's a thing. Maybe, maybe when she wrote this, maybe it was different. It was a different time. I'm going to go with that. Maybe that's what it was. It was just a different time. She wrote this in 1988. I was a wee lad at 1988. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I can't give her that. that. That is, this is 19. I can speak in public to a powerful male group without putting my race on trial. I don't even have a clue. 20. I can do well in a challenging situation without being called a credit to my race. I am never asked to speak for all the people of my racial group. Then why in my Lord's name are you doing it now when ain't nobody ask you for this information peggy 22 i can remain oblivious of the language and customs of persons of color who constitute the world's majority without feeling in my without feeling in my culture any penalty for this or rather for such oblivion so Again, Peggy's got 47 problems and race is not one of them. So what? People, I mean, the, the, the constant drumbeat that, oh, white people don't know. Let's be honest. There's a lot of black folk that don't know other languages. So why are we acting? And they, they're fine with that. They're, I'm black and I'm fine with the fact that I don't know French. I do not know Portuguese. I am not up on Mandarin at all. And I'm perfectly fine with that. I understand that there, there's a possibility that I could be limiting. I totally get it. I am not interested in it. Why is that a cultural 
ethnic charge. I don't get it. 23. I can criticize our government and talk about how much I fear its policies and behavior without being seen as a cultural outsider. Yeah, this is this is too old. I, I think this would I think people would do well to no longer refer to this because it's so old. It, it, it is not germane to now, it's not current, it's not up to date. And it's is actually, I feel it actually really wasn't before, but I think it's really bad now. 24. I can be pretty sure that if I ask to talk to the person in charge, I will be facing a person of my race. How is that a how is that an a, a white privilege? I, I don't understand it. How was it ever? If a traffic cop pulls me over, or if the IRS audits my tax returns, I can I can be sure I haven't been singled out because of my race. I'm not saying that people, uh, black people do not get pulled over and sometimes pulled over for the wrong reasons and um, for specious reasons. Totally get that. But to make that, that would probably be one that I would be willing to say, yeah, you might have something there. But even in that, I don't know about the audit thing. I don't know what that's about. But the traffic cop thing, again, I've got pulled over twice in this neighborhood that I live in, and I've lived here all of 14 years. So, or and even in the vicinity of the area that I live, I've only gotten pulled over twice. And I just don't see, this is not something that's on my mind. Because please keep in mind, if I'm breaking the law and I get pulled over because I was driving fast and I get pulled over to get a ticket, that's not primarily because I'm black. It's because I broke the law. Maybe we shouldn't put that up there as the the main reason why events happen. Maybe so, Peggy. I can easily buy posters, postcards, picture books, greeting cards, dolls, toys, and children's magazines featuring people of my race. Remember, that's what Matt Chandler talked about. And we know that that's dumb. But he's still, but again, Matt Chandler in 2021 basically recited this when he was talking about going around Barnes & Noble, spending 15 minutes trying to find a book that looks like your kid. 27. I can go home from most meetings or organiz of organizations I belong to feeling somewhat tied in rather than isolated, out of place, outnumbered, unheard, held at a difference or heard, held at a dif distance or feared. I never feel that way. I, I don't know how you feel that way. And I don't know why somebody would feel that way. But again, uh, we're going to talk about it at the end. I can be pretty sure that an argument with a colleague or another race of another race is more likely to jeopardize his or her chances for advancement than jeopardize mine. No, maybe because you're acting a fool. Maybe because the person is cutting a fool and that's going to really damage their possibility of getting a promotion because they were acting crazy and they weren't able to deal with an issue where they were told no. Maybe, 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 maybe. I mean, there are other reasons why people careers are jeopardized and advancement is limited. There are other reasons, not race, is, and race is not one of them. I can be pretty sure that if I argue for the promotion of a person of another race or a program centering, centering on race, this is not likely to cost me heavily. Within my present setting, even if my colleagues disagree with me, I, I don't know where what she would be doing. I don't know. Again, this one is just old. So I'm going to let that one slide. I don't know what why, why you'd be arguing for something like that. But I guess if I declare there is a racial issue at hand or there isn't a racial issue at hand, my race will lend me more credibility for either position than a person of color will have. No, well, maybe it's really not a racial issue. I think that's one of the things that, that this one is very juvenile in his thought process, very immature in the thinking, like everything is just a very cut and dry. There are no nuances in this. No, maybe it isn't a racial issue. Maybe what you're saying might truly be a racial issue, but maybe what somebody else is, is touting isn't a racial issue. 
And I think we've seen that. Like, there's a lot of things that are not racial issues that have been made racial issues because somebody said it. And yeah, I don't think that's just a juvenile way to think. Uh, 31, I can choose to ignore developments in minority writings, writing in minority activist programs or disparage them or learn from them. But in any case, I can find ways to be more or less protected from negative consequences of any of these choices. I, I don't know what she means. And I, there's a lot of these things I choose not to participate in. I've told people already, you don't have to participate in white guilt. So I don't know what you mean, Pegs. My culture gives me a little fear, gives me little fear about ignoring the perspectives and powers of people of other races. I don't feel any kind of way about that. I don't sit around and think this person has more power than me. This person is more privileged than me. This person is any of that stuff. I, I, I don't fixate on that. And there, therein is the problem. You fixate on the wrong things, Peggy. 33, I am not made acutely aware that my shape, bearing, or body odor will be taken as a reflection on my race. I, I have no idea what she means. Like, what does that mean? My shape, bearing, or body odor will be taken as a reflection on my race. I, okay. I guess. I mean, I've heard some disparaging things about people groups and the way they, they all people groups smell or what are all people groups are shaped and whatever like that. But it's been inter and exter and out. I mean, it's been all kinds of races have said that. So I don't even know what she's talking about. And I remember this when I was a child. So when Peggy was writing this, it was true then. So like, it's still true now. I mean, people say foul things about people groups. What, what does that mean? Number 34, I can worry about racism without being seen as self-interested or self-seeking. Okay. I'm not interested at all. So I don't know what that means about me. I just leave it alone. Like y'all, y'all go ahead and do that. I'm not going to do that. There, problem solved in my mind. What 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 I need to do next, Pegs? All right, let's get down to we're in the final stretch now. Okay, thirty five. I can take a job with an affirmative action employer without having my coworkers on the job suspect that I got it because of my race. There's a problem because you have affirmative action in place, which is a racist policy. So, yeah, if you get a job in a, an affirmative action employer, guess what? People are going to think that because the affirmative action employer says, hey, they're waving a the flag saying, hey, I'm racially motivated. I hire people because of race. I only look at externals before I look at internals. That's what. So, of course, people are going to look at you sideways. I don't understand why you're so proud of that, Pegs. And I know you got to be smart enough to realize that. 37. I'm sorry, 36. 36, please forgive me. If my day, week, or year is going badly, I need not ask of each negative episode or situation whether it had a racial overtones. I don't do that either. And I'm black. Pegs, I don't do that. I don't wonder if race was an issue on why something went south last year. You know what I do? I wonder what do I need to do differently? What could I have learned from that? What did I learn from that? How am I gonna move differently moving forward? What am I gonna do something? How am I gonna apply this knowledge that I learned from this failure in the next event? That's what I do. I, I very rarely wonder, hey, was that race? And maybe it could have been, but guess what? There's nothing I can do about it, even if it was. Even it was because I'm black. Guess what? There's not a thing I can do. So therefore, worrying about it, fixating on it, does nothing. I like this article. 37. I can be pretty sure of finding people who would be willing to talk with me and advise me about my next steps professionally. That's so dumb. That's so stupid. I'm sorry. There I, I is she trying to tell me that only white people have the privilege of having a network of people that they can talk to? This sounds like Tim Keller. Uh, that sounds 
mentally deficient to say that. 38. I can think over my options, socially political, social, political, imaginative, or professional, without asking whether a person of my race would be accepted or allowed to do what I want to do. I don't know who you've talked to, Peggy. I don't think about that. I really don't. And I'm willing to guarantee you, most black people don't do that. Most of them don't. Most Asian and most Hispanic people don't do that. We think about, do I have the skill set to get me there? Do I have the skills to pay the bills? I don't worry about, does my skin get me in? That's not what I'm thinking about, Peggy. Why is that? Why, why is this article being touted to students in college? I can be late to a meeting without having the lateness reflect on my race. Now, again, that's what I'm saying. Like a lot of these should be should be trimmed out because now people they're on a whole nother level with this being late thing. But it's rude. It's rude. I've never bought into CP time. Never, never. And by God's grace, I never will. Forty. I can choose public accommodations without fearing that people of my race cannot get in or will be mistreated in these places I have chosen. I don't know what that is. Where, where is this place? Where, where are these places? Where? Maybe they did. Maybe it existed when Peggy wrote this. Maybe they did. I'm going to go on a limb and say she had never been in a situation. She's never seen a situation like that. I guarantee you. I can be sure, 41, that if I need legal or medical help, my race will not work against me. I don't know how that works. People keep saying this about medical help and race and medicine. I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm going to go on a limb that most people don't know what you're talking about. How is that a, a white privilege? I can arrange my activities so that I will never have to experience feeling of rejection owing, owing to my race. Black folk do it all the time. Black folk have been doing it all the time. Whatever. If I have low credibility as a leader, I can be sure that my race is not the problem. You know why? Because you have low credibility as a leader. That's the problem. It's not, they might, because we keep leading with our race and say, hey, that black man over there is a sorry leader. That white woman over there is a terrible leader. We keep leading with race. We could just say that man over there is a bad leader. That woman over there is not a good leader. That could be it. Maybe if we stop leading with race, everything will not, or ethnicity, it won't boil down to ethnicity. How about that? I can easily find academic courses and institutions which give attention only to people of my race. I don't even know, what, what was this? Again, this is something maybe Peggy was experiencing in 1988. Maybe it's something it doesn't apply now. I don't know what she means. 45, I can expect figurative language and imagery in all of the arts to testify to the experiences of my race. I, I don't even know what that means. Like figurative language and imagery of all the arts to testify to the experiences of my race. Peggy has some problems, y'all. 46. I could choose blemish cover or bandages in flesh color and have them more or less match my skin. And that's a privilege to have a Band-Aid. Like, what would you rather have had? Uh, okay, the Band-Aid argument. The Band-Aid argument, I think, is really dumb. It, it's really dumb. There's some in here that I could give you a pass on. I could say, you know, maybe we could kind of flesh it out some. And now in 2023, we've kind of fleshed that out, fleshed it out, get it? Pun intended. But the Band-Aid one was really ignorant. Are you really? And I still don't think it's smart today. And I've said in another episode, I think it's cool that they have Band-Aids that are more my color, but I really don't care. If I'm bleeding, I want the, ble the bleeding to stop. I really don't care if I look down and say, oh, it's got a SpongeBob on it. Oh, it's, it's peach color. Oh, it's got My Little Pony. Is it, did it stop the bleeding is the question. 47. Hey, there's some extra ones in here. I can travel alone or with my spouse without expecting embarrassment or hostility in those who deal with us. Man, that's just dumb. I don't think that was happening in 1988. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's no way you can get me to believe that you couldn't travel alone. 
I have no difficulty finding neighborhoods where people approve of our household. That's a white privilege. Because you do realize, I, again, I live in a neighborhood with predominantly white neighborhood, and I have not wondered one moment if people approve of my household. I don't care. I don't care. I really don't. All my neighbors got dogs. I don't care. Y'all go on with your dogs. I do not care. I am not a dog person. We're not a dog family. I don't care. I don't care. 49. My children are given texts in classes which implicitly support our kind of family unit and do not turn them against my choice of domestic partnership. Um, that one right there really was problematic. And sadly, and this is for people that support Peggy McIntosh. You, this is stuff that you're going to you're gonna end up doing. You're going to end up supporting pure outright insanity, especially if you profess to be a Christian. Listen to what she said. They support, implicitly support our kind of family unit and do not turn them against my choice of domestic partnership. You know what, Peggy? I don't even know what kind of lifestyle you were living or what your family structure was, but guess what? The family structure was not made by you. It wasn't your choice. It's God instituted plan. And now in 2023, we can see what happens when we shirk our nose and thumb our nose at God's plan. Go figure. Last one. I will feel welcomed and normal in the usual walks of public life, institutions, and social. Peggy, I don't know what it was that she was dealing with that made her so feel like the world was against her. <laughs> oh my gosh, Peggy, poor baby. You were really having a, a tough time. I really don't get it. So I said in the beginning, I would give you like, Peggy had 47 problems and race is not one of them. Truly, I think what it is, is Peggy felt guilty that her life was doing pretty well. And there's a lot of people, and we've seen it definitely in, in our modern context. They, they, they come from decent families. They come from good upbringings. They have good education. They have decent jobs. Fill in the blank. But now they're out here being allies. Now they're out here being activists. Now they're out here doing all this stuff because I think deep down inside, they feel guilty. We've bought into a society that's made us think that living a certain kind of way is bad and having a certain lifestyle is bad when that's not the case at all. But we've bought into it that if you're doing pretty well, your family's intact, your kids are going to school okay, and you got a little money in the bank and go to vacation every now and then, that's a bad thing. That's not true, though. But we've made it reality. We've made it the situation where you got to feel guilty because you've made good choices, because you've made decent decisions, so on and so forth. We got to make it, oh, you, you have white privilege because you can go to the grocery store and buy groceries. Oh, you got white privilege because you can rent an apartment. No, stop it. Stop it. It's just dumb. It's dumb. And Peggy's article is dumb. If you feel like I was a little bit harsh on her or whatever like that, comment down below, dearwokec at gmail.com if you want to email me. Perfectly fine. I thank y'all so much for hanging in there with me for this. And man, if you if you voted for me to do this, you owe me a coffee. Go to buy me a coffee forward slash Dear Woke C and help me out here. CH, please help me out because, man, that was, that was painful. That hurt a lot. Geneva Convention is coming for y'all. But everybody, I appreciate you so much. Thank you. And until next time, everybody, grace and peace. Take care.